Let's talk a little bit about what it feels like to be with a covert narcissist and a little bit about how you can tell you're even with a covert narcissist. My name is Lise Clucci and I am here to help you understand things related to narcissism as well as to help you transform your life after being with toxic people or in toxic relationships or raised by toxic people. So hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. If you need coaching, group coaching, or anything related to peer support, check out the main information in the description of every video. There's lots of links there to help you find your way toward getting help for yourself. So let's get started with covert narcissism. All right. If you've been with a covert narcissist, one of the more common things you might be feeling is alone. You feel alone in the relationship. You feel alone in life because the people around you don't recognize the toxic things that are going on and your ability to describe what happened is so twisted up and so buried and so hidden because of the way the toxic person manipulates the way covert narcissists manipulate isn't overtly obvious sometimes okay and so you're left feeling alone you're left feeling isolated you're left feeling like you don't have anyone to turn to who gets it or like anyone who you do tell will even believe you. So when you're with a covert narcissist, you're constantly having to take care of and manage and maintain the wants and needs of that narcissistic person. Your whole world becomes wrapped up around them. You lose yourself. You have no sense of who you are in life and your needs get completely swept under the rug or not or ignored. And you're left with a feeling of not knowing what you want, who you are and what you need anymore. You just know this isn't right. You feel completely wrapped up in somebody else's reality. And because of the way covert narcissists argue and the way that they are constantly protecting themselves and the way that they're constantly playing the victim in every situation, you're often left feeling like the bad guy, so to speak, or the or the perpetrator or the one who's yelling and arguing and angry all the time or upset or crying or whatever it is, you're left holding the emotional burden for the whole relationship. And they aren't taking any accountability and they're not making any changes because after all, they're pointing the finger to you that it's your fault. You basically, if you've been with a covert narcissist, you might notice that you have been spending all your time catering to the emotionally fragile personality of the toxic person, of the narcissistic person. And, and you're walking on eggshells all the time just so you don't say the one thing that's going to set off a defensive attack that becomes a twisted argument that twists everything back to them being the victim and you being the bad guy and you end up consoling them and apologizing to them. And the thing that you're upset about in the first place, completely lost. All right, or the misunderstanding or the words that were spoken, not even part of the story anymore. And you're lost, right? You're lost in this constantly trying to just fix things all the time. It is emotionally heavy on your heart. And it, it's very, I liken it to like a rock tied around your heart and just pulling you underwater. It's kind of this emotionally heavy and very magnetic at the same time attraction and energy attraction and energy around that toxic narcissistic person that just pulls you under and you lose yourself so let's talk about a couple of signs of covert narcissism before we finish up here so how do you know that you're with a covert narcissist i mean you'll have some of these signs yes but but how do you know based on who they are and how they're acting so a covert narcissist is somebody that is very vulnerable emotionally. They're also called vulnerable narcissists. They may be depressive or quiet or shy, or, or they may be completely friendly and the type of person that isn't so much charming, but sort of humble, right? And they may be in situations where everyone thinks they're great, or they may be someone who helps a lot of people. But what you start to see is that this empathy that they seem to have really is self-serving. It's always about what it gets them. It's always about the gain that they get from helping others or the gain that they get from any, ex any expression of empathy, right? It's not about a connection to another person or the feelings of another person and, and caring and taking action. It's about 
oh, there's a situation I can use to benefit myself. They have very subdued, almost subliminal ways of asserting their authority and superiority over other people. They're not overtly out there saying, I'm so much better than everyone, like a co like an overt narcissist might do, right? They're, they're subtly judging and subtly criticizing other people and situations usually either under their breath or in quiet or almost in a way that's passive aggressive or just a simply an eye roll or, or a sigh or an expression or through humor that is ill-timed and critical. So they'll do this so that they don't look boastful, they don't look prideful, they don't look arrogant. Okay, but if you see it enough over and over and over, you start to feel the arrogance of it. You feel the superiority that's in there. There's sort of a condescending nature about how they interact with others, but it's super subtle so that it's almost like backhanded. So covert narcissists will often take the woe is me or the victim stance in situations where they should or might want to if they were a healthy individual take accountability, right? So anytime that they have to be responsible or accountable to something that they don't want to be, which is most things, right? They will take the victim stance or the woe is me stance or the everyone's out to get me stance, okay? And they will rope you in as the one person that stands by them and you'll feel guilty for not standing by them, right? Because they have set it up that way. They make they they say things that make it seem like it's just you and them and they don't have anybody else. So basically covert narcissism can be a little bit tricky because it's not something that people catch right away. It's not something that you can go out to dinner with someone and, and notice most of the time, right? Right off the bat. Whereas an overt narcissist is going to be charming and boastful and full of themselves and and magnetic and or incredibly rude and incredibly toxic and incredibly negative right so it's obvious something's going on with that person this is a way of sort of hiding the narcissism behind a normal persona this is a way of hiding the narcissism behind socially acceptable behavior and it doesn't actually become socially acceptable behavior in private in private these things slip the masks come off and and the covert narcissist will have a lot of trouble in relationships when anything is not going their way when anything is not the exact direction that they need it and that can be the smallest littlest things that a person can't keep track of on the other end right you cannot you can't read their mind predict what it is that the direction that they're trying to turn or they will need things to go and then follow it for your entire life, you would be nothing but someone there to serve them. So covert narcissism is also incredibly painful for people because usually it takes years to see it. Okay. And then also you have, by the time you recognize what's going on, a very enmeshed relationship and your life has been given over toward this relationship. So it becomes very difficult to extract yourself from it and not feel like you're losing everything. So if you need help after watching this with anything related to how to leave, what to do, how to help yourself, or if you're choosing to stay, how to function and be healthy for yourself, while you have this going on in your life, let me know, let me know in the comments, reach out to me an email, book a session for coaching, whatever it is you need to do, okay? Take care of yourself and I will see you guys next time.